Hey, Unpaid Lunch listeners, you can find us on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and ad-free as a Prime member on Amazon Music. Find us on social medias and YouTube at Unpaid Lunch. On your break today, Andy Pete's boss stops by to make it wet in studio. He tells us about crawling around in poop and fixing sewer leaks all over the state. We give our shit show of the week, and Rhino is mad again. All right, time to clock out for lunch. Welcome to Unpaid Lunch. Thanks for spending your break with us. I'm Heavy D. With me, as always, the living legend, Rhino. And Andy P. is off tonight. Believe it or not, off tonight again. Say hi to the hustlers, Rhino. Hey. <laughs> Listen, That's the I'm first time you've ever done that. Listen, I'm <laughs> tired. I'm kind of a little bit floaty right now. It feels like the reason Andy P. is not here is because in studio we have his boss. <laughs> 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 it feels a whole lot like he came up with whatever reason he could. So I didn't know that here. was what the dynamic was there. I didn't realize that he was a subordinate to our yeah. wonderful guest tonight. Yeah, he's a subordinate, but he's not really anybody's subordinate, kind of the way he, in any job he's ever had, right? Oh, oh no, 100%. <laughs> yeah, so he's, he's like, just lets you know. Yeah. <clears throat> it works out good that you already knew him and you don't have to learn that. Are you not even going to put this him. man's name out here? We're just, just going to call did him I Andy just, P's boss? Yeah, Andy P's boss, Nathaniel. I, I think, didn't hear the Nathaniel. Did I, I say it? No. I don't think so, no. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm, let's back up do it again. Let's just say it. He's All right, there it was. Big boss. We Big did boss. There. Big boss. Big boss. Big boss, man. Makes me want to play some Metal Gear. So. You can hit the table. You love hitting the table. I'm going to hit the table. Listen, audience. <laughs> Uh, I wish this was a sponsor. It's not, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you out right now. You're going to hear it like this little plastic bag a lot throughout this episode because apparently they make Snickers cookie dough bites. So Shout out if, Snickers. If you hear that, you I'm sorry, say. but it, I've been in a baseball tournament all day long. My sugar is jacked bad. Uh, and they're I'm, fat guy approved. They fucking I am rock. prioritizing these cookie dough bites over audio they're, quality. They're and I, I apologize. Don't care. So Nathaniel, um, and and Andy P work uh, for a I guess you can consider it a municipality. Yeah, a municipality uh, of of a city that I mean it's 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 a city kind of. Luckily for you guys, you, you do we call more this a city? Fun. It's a shithole. I call it a crater. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> it's it's a lake now. It's a swampland. We've yeah. been over that. We need to get some hydroelectric going. Which. <laughs> Uh, Nathaniel's worked um, for water departments, sewage departments for a couple different places uh, all over the state. It feels like that's kind of his thing. Shit is his business, and he's good at it. Yeah, good to stretch. Good to stretch for the. Um, well, you keep everybody's water running, so that's, that's something. If Everybody pay, flushes if their you wipes. Pay the bill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, no. Most people don't pay the bill. I, I'm, oh, I'm the that. world's worst for it, it. It takes them too long to get there to cut it off anyway. It's fine. Listen, yeah, you no, can literally ask him. You can ask Nathaniel's <laughs> wife. I'm the world's worst at paying that water bill. We all, And we all live. Uh, he, uh, Nathaniel, Pretty bad. Yeah, Nathaniel is in control of of, pay, of our, our sewer system and our water here. We all live within city limits. So We always talk about having shitty jobs. Pun intended, he has a shitty job. It is the shitty job. Yeah, Mike Rowe would be fucking proud of this episode, I think. Approved. You yes. take micro. Wouldn't you love to take micro out with you? I would. It might not go as he would want, but yeah. Put him in that fucking hole right in the middle of neon. Oh yeah, the fountain. That the comes fountain. Yeah. yeah, there's a fountain. It's the beautiful <clears throat> fountain of neon. Perfect segue. Okay, <laughs> what the fuck is up with that manhole cover, man? <laughs> manhole cover, man. Yeah, it's just shit that is too much. Hey, and and it really, it really kind of so. Um, hanging out with a bunch of people who work for the water department, the sewer department, you get more information than you want about how much of the water is shit <laughs> you, that you don't realize it's just shit. So you see all that water over there? That's shit. It's amusing to see people drive through and try to miss it, and then it like just covers the windshield, <laughs> and you're like, mm. wash your car. Yeah, because I mean, or you see the kids like. Take off running and just swan dive in it. And you're like, yep. Yeah, and just to set the that's scene, that's gonna be a staff infection. Literally <laughs> on the main street of of our town, which is just about thirty feet long. 
but on the main street of our town, there's a hole, there's a manhole cover that's, that's had to been paved over like six times because poop just flows out of it like a fountain whenever it rains too much. <laughs> Charlie, we're sorry. Well, after the flood, I was told, wasn't here, but I was told that the workers come in and said they were over there and said they looked down and the guy was just washing his hands in it. Oh, and they were like, "Buddy, you probably shouldn't do that." He's like, "Oh, it's just water, ain't it?" And they're like, "No, no, not much. No, no not did he, much." Did he get superpowers? I, I feel like that's how like X Men starts. Could Indian. be wrong, but I, I just feel like that's some way someone gets superpowers from that manhole cover. Yeah, they all they all like different colored neon lights. It's like the thing that Rhea Repulsa cartoon. comes out of, like at the beginning of Power Rangers. Like, I'm here to conquer. And she comes de- out of the hole. There's definitely Power Ranger villain comes out of it. Uh, Are you a Power Ranger villain? Depends on which one. It feels like you could be. You be a power ranger villain for this one. Gold R. So your job is definitely. Um, it was excited to get you on because we're. Uh, your job's pretty cool. Like just to, okay, so it's not right. It sucks, right? <laughs> but like what you've done is more interesting than like fucking what we've done. I guess. Yeah, like like yeah. Feel like it's much more interesting than anything we've done. Yeah. Like. Just you're literally like. When we say we're in the shit, we got a bunch of people on hold. When you say you're in the shit, man, you're just you're actually in the shit. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I mean, I have fell in it from about twenty feet and been strapped from right below my eye and the rest of me covered. Oh, what does a normal nine to five look like in this world? Um, stress, headache, and you know, you 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 always want to get a paycheck, but you really don't want to kind of rolling around in other people's shit for a living. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I just couldn't do it. I don't think. And mm, speaking no. of water bills, it's my job is literally piss off a whole community. Yeah. So, how does that, is. What's, mm, <clears throat> so legitimately like this is uh, the man that kind of governs, you know, with the whole entire department who goes around, checks your meter, make sure, you know, checks your water consumption, make sure you're, Staying on par, this, that, and everything else. But I have to imagine, like, have you ever been caught in the act of shutting someone's water off? A thousand times. How does that go? Because uh, I imagine towing. some of them's like, oh, well, fuck, I didn't pay it. And other ones are like probably throwing shoes at you. Um, I've had a shotgun put on me before. Um, baseball bats. Really just a pin. Do you turn on. it back on or you just leave? Oh, no. No, there's no turning it back on. <laughs> this, <laughs> so I got to go. We like to use the term thief in the night because I try to eliminate a situation. Well, it doesn't take pull a long up, time. Out, pull it, run. Right, it doesn't take long. Sometimes it does. Ones that have not been disconnected recently, right? Yeah. It takes a long time. Like, Oh, yeah. If you got to pull it out of the ground, you're going to get caught in a yeah. situation with your head in a hole and don't know what's going on until you look up and somebody's standing directly over top of you. I really want to follow you around with a camera. And so like, mine's the easiest in the world to shut off right now. So setting the stage back in March... Where we live, the Kentucky Wildcats is a big, huge to-do. Last game of the NCAA tournament, UK loses, okay? Yeah. About that time, the power goes off. We completely lose power. And I was like, well, that sucks. You know, the game just ended. <laughs> like, what's going on? Someone just light a couch on fire and something bad happened. And my son laughed. He didn't understand the concept of Kentucky fans burning couches. I was like, okay. And then about that time, right out my peripheral, I see an engulfing circle of flame. I was like, shit, I was right. <laughs> I was burning something down. So I walk outside and there's, um, walk outside and we can literally see fire shooting probably eight foot by eight foot all the way up and down the sidewalk. When we get to looking at it, whole entire telephone line or power line has snapped, broke from a previous windstorm, and it's whipping back and forth like Indiana Jones. Like just a whip, just oh, yeah. striping flames up and down the whole entire sidewalk. So I was like, this is not good. My kids start freaking out. My daughter's like, all right, we've lived through a flood. Now our whole entire house is going to be burnt down because it's like probably six feet from the house. But what we come to find out, the reason there is so much engulfing flame coming or going around is that line has landed right directly on top of the meter. So I don't know if you've noticed it up there. Like, I think you guys are the ones that actually get, kind of pulled it out now. But it's sitting there on top of that conducting just wildfire all up and down everywhere. Um, one of the assistant coaches in our league, his father-in-law comes out. He's like, um, you need to get your whole family out of your house, like, right now. Yeah. The whole feels thing like is going to burn. Feels down. like it's going to engulf, yeah. 
So we all get outside. Everyone's coming up. You know, it's it's starting to snow outside. It's hilarious. But now when you drive up there, like the little actual, literal actual cover that usually feels like it weighs like 20 or 30 pounds. You have to pick up and move like when you're cutting grass and stuff because yeah. it's just in the way. No, nah, it's just laying on the side now. It's gone. Good to just ignore that conversation. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> it's fine. I'm, I'm assuming you guys are the ones that pulled it boss, out. I'm assuming. Big but. boss man says it's fine. I mean, I'm no. assuming it's fine. Don't worry about it. I mean, look, the less lid you have to lift to look at it, the better. Mm. It, it is nice knowing people, though. Like, knowing people in the water department. I can just call Nathaniel and be like, hey, can you come help with this no water situation here? <laughs> No, I haven't. Y'all, y'all do pretty good though. You keep it going. I know it's all. It's funny because like we talk about food service, like um, it's all chaos behind the scenes, and it's a miracle that anything that anybody gets food put yeah. out. It's kind of like that with you guys, right? I know just from oh, talking to Andy, it. just from talking to Andrew, he's like, it's chaos. It's crazy everywhere. That boy is gonna eat that cookie dough. He really, I was about to say really, sorry for the so noise, loud. guys. But Just I pour told them all out on the table. Oh, That's fucking bad. Look what you did. Look Boom. at the cookie dough. There's everywhere. crumbs everywhere. I don't even care. You're going to eat them too. I yeah, I don't care. Fuck. That's good. What was I talking about? I got distracted by cookie dough. <laughs> the, the pure chaos. Oh yeah, no, it's it really is just. He said like it's just everything's quite literally a shit show, and then everybody just has water and sewer all the time, and it's a miracle. Oh yeah, a thousand wonders with nothing yeah. to work with and stuff that's. But back in the eighties, yeah, you guys are literally creating, uh, creating your own sensors and shit because you, oh yeah, because you don't have anything new and can't get funding for anything new. Well, the newest yeah. thing that we have for the whole entire water department's the floating Death Star down here that it's housed out of now because we don't yeah. have a city hall. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah they, this they, is a random building, just like they're the buildings, but in my FEMA, they're exactly <laughs> the buildings from Call of Duty. Oh yeah, yeah. They're just oh yeah. They're just the buildings from Call of Duty. It's like you just run through them, and I've been in there twice, and it's. I'm actually it's incredibly glad that Andrew ain't here today. Andrew, I love you. Are you incredibly glad he's not here because you think that it's a conflict of interest? That's why I think he's not. Are here. They, well, not so much conflict of interest. I'm going to see if I can get his boss talk shit about him. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We Plus, I don't want to share my cookie divides with him. Uh, well, I mean, we have this saying that common sense don't run very deep. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, he, so, he will, I just, this dude's all book smart. Andy, I love you. How much common sense does a man have? Is he pretty common sense? He's pretty, yeah. He's, yeah, he's, yeah, pretty, yeah, well he's, he's pretty self-aware, yeah. So there's a difference between self-awareness he, and common no, sense. No, he's got common sense. He just don't talk about it. Yeah. That's fair. Well, you think you don't have common sense, but when I say that he does, that should show you the level of, the level that we deal with. I think the man's brilliant. I know that. He gets grumpy at five o'clock. He does, yes. When he's ready yeah. to go. Yeah. The other night we were out till uh, nine o'clock to fix the water leak. And I just looked over and normally we have very deep conversations throughout the day. He was very quiet. Yeah. And I looked he's, over and he was kind of just staring straight out the windshield. Yeah. He's uh, He was just over it. I'm sure he was shaking his head. Like, what are we doing here? But boy, you tell him to jump in a hole and dig something, he'll do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That boy, that boy will work. Here, I mean, I'm not going to. I wouldn't work. I wouldn't work for you. <laughs> I've not done manual, manual labor in a long time. I enjoyed it when I did do yeah. it. Yeah, but I'm so fat and out of shape now that I'd probably just die. Isn't that what you're looking for? Yeah, <laughs> a swift death, especially after this week. I don't think you'd have a swift death in uh, working under Nathaniel. Though he would work you slowly to death. Yeah, I like to take my time. A little bit of punishment as we go, you know. <laughs> but I'll put a shovel in your hand. I don't care. We just stop quit and go work for the water department. I'd probably lose 50 pounds. Well, I mean, yeah, it'd be working instead of sitting behind a desk, wouldn't we? I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's 100% what we would be doing. But so I'm what's, not, the, the so sitting behind a desk thing is tiresome. Yes. Yeah. I'm literally like, my ass hurts. I've literally, I even had the conversation with my boss like a week or two ago. I'm like, I'm just. So mentally checked out. Yeah. I guess that is something though, like you have new shit every day, right? Like, I mean, I mean, I know you're doing the same shit every day, but like, I mean, you have like the routine, right? Like that you have to start and stuff you have to do every day, but like, Hey, there's a fucking water leak up on top of this hill that nobody's been on in 10 years. Yeah. You you know what I mean? And, And you go do that. That's something different than you're doing the day. I mean, I guess it's not, I guess 
everything has its monotony that you're just doing the same thing over and over, no matter where it's at. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you get the random call that you think you're having an easy day and they're like, oh, well, the, the highway department decided to bust a main Cut line. through it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had to deal with Coopy? Yes. <laughs> Love that man. <laughs> Love him. If you're dealing with him like water and sewer, not like buying a Mr. Fizz oh, off of Oh, him. yeah, because one okay. of our... Source water is literally <laughs> right across Fizz, from his Lots of soda pop. Mr. Fizz and a pack of USA Golds. Because I was 12. It's fine. God, it Just to set the stage, Coopy is my grandfather. <clears throat> we consider him a national institution in the town of Mac Roberts, Kentucky. Boy knows more about wrestling than anybody. Anybody, anybody who has a wrestling podcast, wrestling I would challenge satellite. you. That's Dish Network. Oh, it's all, all the man talks about. That's so, why uh, we really got kind of concerned the other day. He's 90 now. You know, I forget he's alive. I know that's like, I know that's awful, but like. He's going to outlive us all. Well, like, only reason I forget he's alive because Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> like, he was old as fuck when I was a kid. Like, when I was a kid, they were like, Coopy probably ain't going to make He's going to die any day. <laughs> like, turns out he's made of something else. He is 90 now. And uh, he was staying with my mom the other day. That was right around the time that, you know, we had the power outages and stuff with the yeah. storms and everything. But was talking to him and everything. Where mom was talking to him. She's like, Daddy, I know you don't feel good. Because he just had another recent bout with COVID. Kind of yeah. like the gastrointestinal variety. Yeah, yeah. It's not set well with him. So he's been staying with her because his wife, my grandmother. Can't is get in covocations a, if you're retired, though. Hmm? Can't get covocations if you're retired. You can And Betty is in Lexington right now. She's been at um, UK for, Betty is for a wife. little bit. Yep. As my grandmother. So they're That's never apart, works. which is kind of weird. And like Coopy does not like to stay at his own house. Ha- like he does not like to leave his house. Yeah. Ever. There's Same. no such thing as a vacation leaving Same. going anywhere with Coopy. Same. Same. Stay at the house. I don't go anywhere. Nope. So mom walked in the other day and she could tell he wasn't feeling good. She's like, hey, daddy, here's the remote. If you want to watch some TV, he said, I don't think I want to watch anything right now. We're like, oh, God, Papa's dying. <laughs> it's over. He's like, he's not wanting to watch any television. What? Um, turns there were, out he there was, was not no, feeling great. But there was no wrestling on either. There was no. I, I don't know that he watches wrestling anymore. Well, I'm sure he doesn't if it's not pay per view. I think he hates AEW. I think it ruined the world for him. <laughs> it's, a, it's live. It's live golf for him. Yeah, it could be the was case. But AEW. <clears throat> I feel like he complains about everything. So I figured you probably had to deal with him multiple times. No, I've never once had him complain to me at all. Really. No, because no. y'all keep that water running, baby. Well, no. I wonder like if he complains about a water bill going up. I could see that being something that Coopy does. I could imagine, yes. But you know, that's I don't luckily have to deal with office work. I immediately look over at your wife. <laughs> over in the yeah, corner. you complain about his bill. I mean, I was like, oh, what? <laughs> what the fuck? That makes the most sense in the world. Okay. He mails it in. Drawing it's, a diagram. It's been the same bill for like 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. He mails this in This floating Death Star that I'm talking It'll about work. that FEMA like, put uh, in. We just cover the rest of it. Yeah. Is literally what? They can't see that. You draw I, I'm picture? drawing it out in my own head because I'm trying to get the footage here. What, 600 feet from the post office? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why he does it, yeah. So he goes to the post office. Mails out his bill that is going 600 feet up the street. Probably mails it at Mike Roberts. Yeah. Right. Mm, he don't drive anymore. Well, then how the fuck would he get to Neil? I don't know. Well, he was driving. He's legally blind. I'm he driving can, You forever. can put mail in your mailbox. All right, here you go. Another ramp. Completely <laughs> <laughs> off topic. Listen, I ain't going to be able to stay on topic now. I'm sorry. Paul, you're sugar Russian. Like you, you like you eat a whole bag of cookie, cookie dough. Bites are phenomenal. You eat a whole bag of cookie dough, and you're gonna be like, "It's great." We have to, we gotta get the show done in 30 minutes. He's gonna pass out. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm really hoping for. At what point do we take the elderly and put oh, an age oh, and what say, is going on here? "This is where you should have to retake your driver's license and determine whether or not you're still a functioning driver." In so society. here's the problem. Um, if you do that, like age wise, you should have to do it every five years because I know a lot of like 30 year olds who shouldn't have a exactly. license. So like, I don't think it's necessarily like, so I'm not going to mention names, but oh, there's really? this old gentleman <laughs> that used to live in Just Neon. mention it. I'll cut it out. Hang on. Cut it out. Junior Welch. <laughs> oh, <good laughs> Bro, oh, Jesus Christ. Junior Welch. Oh. You see his truck, you pull up behind it. You could be driving 10 minutes somewhere. And I'm telling you right now, it's going to take you 45 to get there. 
And it's always Food World where he's going. Yep. And he comes in there, which this has been some time ago. He pulled the buggy and he turned around. That's when I was a bag boy there 20 years ago. He looked at me and he goes, beep, beep. Beep, beep, young man. <laughs> Fuck you. I'm like, I want to beep, beep you while I'm driving behind you. He drove. Go get, a, drove. Go get your freaking driver's license again. Listen, this man drove um, like a Ford F-150, like a 90s Ford F-150 white and red mint yeah. condition. Yeah. Probably the motor was golden because he fucking drove 10 miles yeah. an hour everywhere. So your street that you live on right now, like, and there's another one on up in Flaming, if you hit that back street and you go over 15 mile an hour, they are shooting at you. They are screaming at you. They want you to die. Yeah. Unless they saw Junior Welch on the main road. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody like, knows. Go forth, young man. Get Let around him as around. quick as you can. Let him go around. Well, you know, I got behind him one day, and the man was driving, come down through the school right there, got up on the highway, and then done like 70 miles an hour oh, right yeah. off the road. Old men love the highway. Blow your door off. Yeah. Listen, my wife's papa, right before he died, my wife's papa, that's what he did too. That's what he would drive like. Coming, he lived in Cram Creek and coming out of the hall, and he would do like five miles a fucking hour. Like, oh my god! Like, I would see him the way our roads were built. Like, I could see him pulling out, and I could, I could like go around him like a pace car. Yeah. And like, if I'd see him walk into his truck, and I knew I had to go somewhere, even in the next thirty minutes, I would hurry and go out to my car and go out in front of him and beat him out because Jesus, he took so long to get out. But as soon as I literally just came out of Cram Creek, it's hard enough to navigate that road. As soon as as you get on the highway though, he fucking pedal to the floor and laughing and like, like driving down the road. Like he'll stick his head out the window and laugh at you. You're coming down through Kona coming that way. I'm sorry, listeners, if you don't understand the context here, but you're coming up, you're hitting the bridge right where Mountain Video used yeah. to be. It's getting split into the four lane. And you're following someone going 35 the whole way. You're like, thank God, finally I'm passing like <laughs> fucking 80. Yeah. yeah they, they, I'm like, I it. hope you blow out a tire. Well, they do that because they know you you hate your life. Yeah. I hate everybody. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> it's. Well, I, I'm not mad about it. Look, no. It's okay. I don't have any problem. I, I share it with you. I'm in that same. Yeah. Same state of mind. It's. I don't know. <laughs> It's funny. I think about you and Andrew going out on like on calls and shit, and like having to talk to people. And I neither of you want to, because no. he doesn't want to. He's less, a lot intro- less than He's you. the introvert's yeah, like, introvert. But what's funny is like he's very articulate. So like if he talks to somebody, they don't understand him most of the time. Yeah, like because he's like fucking just talking. Like he's really really talks. It's just, it's but just I feel like Nathaniel doesn't want to talk to people out of sheer annoyance. Like, yeah, I thought like, yeah. a difference. You're a yeah. whole lot like me. We could talk to that wall and get a conversation oh, yeah. out of it. Yeah. yeah, Andrew's not that guy. No, no, he, he's approachable, doesn't want to be. Yeah, right. <clears throat> he gets no all choice. the vibes like, please come talk so to me. So, me and but. you, okay, really, all three of us, damn, all three of us are forced to be extroverts, right? Had no yes. fucking choice because of our fathers. Yeah, had Fair. no choice to be extroverts because of our fathers. I grew up in a Chevron, like I grew up in a gas station, and so did you. Right, right. Preacher's we, kid. Yeah, yeah. Right, preacher's kid. We all grew up. <clears throat> we all grew up like we have no choice. If our fathers are in the gas station together, we should just leave. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's an hour that, and a half. Yeah. Oh, my mom used to get so pissed off all the time. I'm She's sure. like, I can't take your dad anywhere. Which is funny because when they got married, she would have to lean over top of him in the vehicle to order for him because he was so shy he wouldn't order his own. <sighs> And they never hushed. Yeah. And then, then later on in life, when he was preaching, you could not take him anywhere. Anywhere. So what's the shittiest job you've ever been on? Do you have, <clears> like, can you think of one, like, the worst of the worst? Like, no matter where it was, like, not at this one, this job, maybe the previous one? Well, it depends on how graphic you want to get. Oh, I um, love it, baby. You fucking listen bring to our it. podcast, sir. <laughs> we, we talk I about the, the, the belt. What's the apron? What did Slick Nick, the fucking belly apron hanging over the pussy? Oh, I can't remember what that was called. It, oh, God. We got to Atanus? Panus? I don't fucking know. There's a it word was, for that. He had it. it. shook me. That, that shit. Yeah, that me, was though. really articulate. Did it? Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> No, don't worry about it. Um, I've always just called it a fupa, but yeah, it's a fupa. That, that's where I was going with. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. But no, uh, <laughs> <laughs> damn, keep it rolling. Shittiest, shittiest. <laughs> oh god, we're there. Uh, okay, so yeah, as vulgar as you want to be. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, no, I mean, you know, when when you get to some place and and you 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 know the concept of a sewer grinder. 
You know, you got a lid, barrel, yeah. pump in there. It's supposed to just chew all the shit up. When you go to change those and you immediately lift the lid and it's like a muffin top. I mean, you're talking, oh, about, you're talking about diapers, rubbers, tampons, grease. Oh, hot. Oh, yes. yeah. What's well, going to be awesome is now, like, our our phones, all the shorts on our phones and stuff are just going to be sewage shit because oh, because he's talking about it and our phones welcome. are going to pick it up. It's just going to be sewage. No, I mean, and... and I have another rat on that here in a moment, too. You know, you, you talk about the... You get them, and somebody's just took the hottest bath you can imagine. You pop the lid. You got to get a shovel to get all that stuff off. Mm. Steam's hitting you in the face. Mm. Fuck yeah! I mean, it also gets stuck in your mustache at times. Yeah, yeah. you're a you're a special type of man. I like that's, punishment, apparently. In life, evidently, that's yeah. um. I can't even honestly, not even sure I can keep talking about it. So you might have to leave. I kind of want a video of the next time that he finds what he said. I want it videoed. Like, I want Andrea to videotape this for content. Yeah, will you videotape some shit for me and let me put it on for the Patreon? Sure. <laughs> I don't know if they want to see it. I think the patrons want to see the shit. Yeah. They, they, they dig the shit. You I mean, dig the shit, actually. I do. I really you do. literally dig the yeah. shit. Dig the shit. So, <laughs> yeah, that's going to be on our phones now. I kind of hope it is because it would be a nice change of pace for what I'm getting right now. Okay. The other day, my wife was talking about how her, the understrap of one of her bras broke. Now my <laughs> Facebook is constantly reminding me, apparently, that I have man titties. <laughs> because oh. every one of my ads is like, there's no underwire. It will make you feel nice and supported. I'm like, listen, I know I'm rocking for... B cups right now. Are they ads for men's bras? No. Oh. Would you call that the bro or the man's ear? Oh. <sighs> Oh, the bro. I like the bro. I don't yeah. know. I'm kind of a slight fan of the man's ear. It gives man's it a little ear. bit extra. Man, my brain's all over the place. So it's funny because we were talking about that, you know, bras and everything the other day. And my daughter said, when do I have to start wearing a bra, mom? <laughs> and I don't even know if Brittany heard it. And we kind of kept talking back and forth. And all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, she started screaming nipples. Oh, so now my four year old is running in where screaming that's nipples and calling people nipples. That's what's on my mind. Sometimes yeah. just nipples. Some she called that. someone at the ball game tonight nipple. <laughs> but was she wrong? Did they look like a nipple head? Mm. <laughs> I ain't gonna say who it was, but yeah, I, I, I kind of dig it. I'm kind of into it. Nipple head. I mean, kids are very brutally honest, so I feel like if I got called nipple head. Is that um, really fat guy with a tiny head? That's not me. It's Chris Farley. <laughs> Makes me think of cone heads. Oh, I love cone heads. It's a throwback. This episode's brought to you by us. That's right. Unpaid Lunch is sponsoring its own episode. Have a good quitting story? Been fired in a hilarious way? Just need something to listen to while you cry in your car before work? Then boy, are you in the right place. Send us your emails and messages letting us know about why you hate work, and maybe we'll get to read it on an episode. If you love us or even really like us, go support us by checking out our Patreon page. And any donation or sub helps us to keep the show going and is appreciated more than you know. You guys are the reason we do this, and we want to keep doing it for a long time. You can find all the links in the episode below. Now back to the show. <laughs> Welcome back into Unpaid Lunch. We're here in studio with uh, Nathaniel, the water man himself. I didn't say water boy because, I mean, you know, that's a different job. Yeah. Well... Yeah. Water man. I guess Col- water man's yeah. Colgan man, I guess. So you're not Colgan man either. You don't deliver fresh water. No. <laughs> no. No, no. <laughs> you, you do giveth and taketh away. Yes. You do. The okay. taketh away is the fun part. You like that you prefer to taketh away? Yeah. Because like giveth is, an asshole. That's if just... it's giveth, then you don't really have a job if you don't get to taketh away. Exactly. Because the mountains giveth water. Yeah. If I can just drink it. It's strange because I tell people all the time. They go to bitch and complain. <laughs> and I'm like, hey. Drill a well. I don't care. <laughs> drill, a, drill a hole into that mountain over yeah. there. Water will fucking pour out of it. You know? Yeah. It's kind of like all the time we tell people to quit their jobs. They quit their jobs and this man comes and shuts their water. Yeah. Off. <laughs> fucking this is one of the guys that fixes the shit for you <laughs> when when you quit your job. Yep. You know, we talked about quitting, the last, quitting our jobs last night. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I, Nathaniel I, was trying to get me to quit my job, to live in the brand, because my, cause my kids were supposed to have a softball game today. And he was like, you should just go. You should quit your job and just go. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, he was like, you should, you should just live up to it. And I was like, fuck, man, call me out. I'm a terrible influence. I'm a, well, I've called in like the last three times, like the last three yeah. weekends because the kids had games. I was like, eventually I'll be like, oh, I don't know if they have games every Saturday. Feels like. 
Well, they, they, they do. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have to save some of those days for days I just don't want to fucking come to work. Right. I was like, when I call in, it's like, what's what's your reason for calling out? Uh, I'm fucking in the bed. It feels yeah. great. <laughs> it feels great in the bed. I'm not coming to work. That's why. Done that before. Yeah. I'm going to come in. Why not? I don't fucking want to. Because I don't, because do this job sucks. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. It, it sucks. Coming to work sucks. Have you ever went to work? That's yeah. what I think about telling the people. And you call them. What's the reason for calling in? Well, what do you mean? Yeah, it was real bad when I was working for a call center. I just text the guy and be like, "Hey, dude, sorry." Not today, Did man. you work for a call center? Oh yeah. Where at? Uh, ACS in Pikeville. Oh shit! Oh, yeah. that's old school. Yeah, that's fucking way I've back. I've heard anybody said ACS my, in a long time. Yeah, my brother in law worked there. Charlie worked there. Shout really? out Charlie. I, I think didn't know I think that's where he worked. I think he worked in. Yeah, I think that's what that shit was. Where Are you, you really going to shout out Charlie in an episode where we're talking about shit again, dude? It is so funny that the whole episode is about shit. I'm, I might just call it shit right? <laughs> because we've been called out multiple times by one of our fans, and he's a fan. Look, since since day one, he's my brother in law, right? But he does he does our uh, emblems, our logos, and shit. Yeah, and he's super fucking good at it. But he was like, "Hey, man, uh, y'all talk a lot about shit for a show people are supposed to listen to <laughs> on their lunch." And I was like, "All right, yeah, you're kind of right. Yeah. yeah, talk a lot about shit." I don't feel like feel like we clicked Talking that about little him shovel muffin top shit dick demon of 2012. We like clicked that, that little explicit lot of throwbacks to good old. We clicked that explicit button though. We, we do we do that on we do that on purpose. So we do so we can talk about shit the whole time. I mean, you talk about eating lunch and shit. I've literally seen people at the sewer plant. There's a drying bed, right? Yeah, solid comes out, sits on a big old sand bed. Well, out there, naturally. Like a, like cat turds? <laughs> yeah, it's like a big old cat <laughs> turd. It's a fucking litter box. <laughs> it is. An oversized litter box. Shit. But, you know, they're literally. literally yeah, literally. And yeah, figuratively. Tomato plants. Grow in that. Anecdotally. Grab them right off the vine. Wipe it <laughs> off on a shirt. Get a pocket knife out. Slice Shut it. Shut up. Eat it. Oh, yeah. That's real, man. Hey, man. I think. No, uh, that's. No. Yeah. I mean, that's the equivalent of someone going into the deep well, mine. And that's what somebody was like. Sandwich. I think it yeah. was on. And then eating the sandwich. I was watching the Ted Lasso today. And one of the, the quote was like, everything's gone to shit. And she was like, yeah, but shit makes stuff grow. And I was like, all right, I guess that's true. Well, it <laughs> is. Because people would come down with garbage bags and on them same dry beds, shovel it out theirself into a garbage bag, put it in the bed of the Dude, pickup, and take it home. This whole county, everything's going to grow here like fucking crazy oh, forever yeah. now because our ground is just Including shit disease. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like a how much, how much more disease, disease could there be a, here? I, I would literally like to know what the absenteeism rate for our school district is this year. I bet you it's awful. It's not good. Every it's, time I turn around, it's like, well, we, no. we've, we've got another freaking viral disease going around right now that tests negative on everything under the sun. It's all just COVID. It's either good. that or it's all the shit Are you from putting the something in the water? No, but people's accused of that before. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was... Uh, Ooh, uh, conspiracy uh, theories. H. pylori. Oh, it put H. pylori in the water? Yeah, and then when you Google it, you're just like, because I didn't know what the hell it was. I Googled it and it was Is like... Is that the guy from House? Yes. No. <laughs> you, Lori, this is Dave. H.P. Lori. This is like, like H.P. Lori. God, that was that was weak. Yeah, that was I'm going to cut that whole thing. Fuck it. I really, I'm not, I don't cut anything I say I'm going to cut. I don't know if you guys know yeah. that, but I've never cut, I've never cut one fucking thing I said I was going to cut. So anyway, what the fuck? Uh, everything went to shit, didn't it? Yeah, yeah sure. Everything always goes to shit. Tortured it's puns, I love it. So, um, inspired by Nathaniel, um, got a new segment. I think we're gonna start. I'm gonna do every now and then. Um, shit show of the week, which is uh, figure like whenever something bad is going on at work, any job I've ever had, or like whenever anything bad is going on in my life, or especially at work, you know, it is when like shit's going down at work. It's like it's a shit show, mm-hmm. right? So like shit show of the week is uh, you know if something terrible is going on at some situation at work or some situation in your life or <clears throat> fucking, I don't care if your pro team, your favorite team is having a shitty week. That can be your shit show of the week, but I just want to set the premise for it. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Loud right. and clear. So I'm going to start okay. with the shit show of the week. Okay. Served up. My shit show of the week is my job in a call center just started a new phone system. 
<laughs> you talked about this like two weeks ago. Sidebar, you're like, man, I'm going to quit. And I'm like, why? We're getting a new phone system. And I was like, is it really that bad? I don't know. I don't care. I'm still going to fucking quit. So, <laughs> yeah, I knew that was. Yeah. And, and now it's been implemented and we're a week in. Have you found a way to break it? Fucking shit show. So, off the record, I I can't. Like, I'm not, I'm just going to, I'm not going to cut it if I say it, but. Um, I know how to use it's it. It's not really off the record. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't actually give a fuck. I don't think it's like etched in a record right now. What I, yeah, what I what I mean is, um, I'm gonna just play the fifth. Like, I'm, I'm not gonna, you know, but I know how to use it. Right? See, I if think you I say play the it. fifth in our call, Sarah means you're f five and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't f five. Um, I don't. I, I probably avoid calls less than everybody else does, but this new phone system is like. I immediately knew how easy, like it was, I was like, oh, this, all this is going to work fucking fine. Everybody else is going to And everybody, feel. from what you've kind of really articulated in the past with your call centers, everything's kind of set in the 1980s anyways. It is, man. And our last programs were like so outdated and so terrible. And I told them that, like, as soon as I started, I was like, oh, this shit sucks. Your all's phone system is awful. Everything's terrible. Everything looks blocky and like. So they Windows took your feedback and now you hate your life. <laughs> I don't think they took my feedback. I think they, um, the company went out of business that made the phone system we used, I think. <laughs> like, so I think that's what happened. Um, but the new phone, it's just been a shit show. Everybody's like crazy. And one of my good friends, friend of the show, um, is Chris is, uh, he's our IT guy. And it's the worst job to have during this time. Yeah. And he was like, he, cause he used to be in the department I'm in and he, and he went to IT and he's like, this is the worst fucking thing ever. I've literally been a part of two separate phone rollouts inside of a call center. The, one for a department of 115 people, then another one for next level. Health. The Amazon one? Amazon. The, listen, we went from NN to Amazon. My first day on the floor, it was like fucking, and they were like, we're going to use this now. They're like, we got this guy that does process work and builds out standard operating procedures. Let's just nominate him to roll out a whole new fucking phone service to 120 agents. Once a that show, I knew nothing about. Once a show, Ryan gets super management-y. <laughs> oh, like that says management-y stuff. Oh, Jesus. That was awful. Yeah, no, awful. it's... Awful. This is the same way, like, I can't imagine... Still like, hate that phone system. For, like, the first... Like, Give me in and back. For the first four days, there was no reports, like, on this new phone system, so nobody knew what was going on. Like, nobody knew who was on calls. Productivity like, shit. Nobody knows what's going well, on. Well, and literally all, like, we even have, like, uh, like we have this policy in place that's, like, don't go on break... Like, try not to, not don't go on break, because then, you know, I don't care if you're going to fucking piss, but, like, try not to go on break if there's four other people on break. Oh, you know yeah. I mean? Well, I mean, right. that makes sense. Used to, you could just, it was super easy to check on the old phone system, because it was so basic, and it was so easy to check. Now, you just can't check. Like, well, you there's have no, no visibility. Like you said, so, there's no reporting, so yeah. you have no visibility so of adherence right now. Like, I'll go to the break room, and, like, six of us are in there. I'm like, uh, I guess, I guess nobody's <laughs> taking phone calls, and we'll go back, and there'll be ten people on hold, and I was like, all right, that's fine. Rip through these real quick. Luckily, in the phone system, they just drop off the phone call, so it don't matter anyway. So that's my shit show of the week, if that makes sense Listen, for you guys. It's up there. Because, I mean, I've, I've lived that life of being responsible for that, and I hope I'm never responsible for that ever. And I didn't know Nathaniel was either, too. So you've been, you've been in, a, in a... Oh, yeah. You guys used an ancient phone system probably. What year did you work? What year did you work there? Oh, God. 2007. No, Nine? Nine. Yeah, it was around that time. Man. They were using the MS DOS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking Windows ninety eight, probably just ten years out. Oh well, I mean, I, I be honest with you, I don't remember shit about it because after training, we went to the floor and all we done was play basketball. Oh, that's hot. It sounds like ACS. That's that's what. Yeah, yeah that sounds I mean, right. That's why there's no longer an ACS. It's not in business. <laughs> not in business anymore. Do you have a shit? What's your? Okay, no, <clears throat> not. Do you have a shit show? But oh, let's talk about your shit show. Okay, everybody, this is gonna be a while. Buckle so, up. I'm going to set the stage here right off the bat, and this is going to sound very, like, depressing, like me, like, searching inward type thing. So. <laughs> Always looking for this. Um, well, his yang. Well, this is where it's going to start, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to lead, and it's going to make sense. <gasps> so, throughout my whole entire life, like, we talked about my dad being a pastor and everything else, but the main profession that my I remember my dad for was coach. My dad coached me from the minute I turned six in T-ball. I lived till I was 16 leaving senior league, so about 10 years. 
watched him coach my brother a little bit. He, he, didn't, he didn't coach my brother a whole lot because I was the favorite child. Sorry, Jeremy. Jeremy but, knows that. <clears throat> well, anybody that coaches, they have two kids. It's not a secret. It's no. just you're odd. No, they love him so much more. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> no. They, so here's the reason why he always stayed with me, and anybody that has two kids can speak to this. You, it is the most labor-intensive thing in your brain try to try to go back a phase of baseball. Yeah. Once you're in coach pitch, you can't go back to T-ball no. mentally. Once you're in Lily, yeah. you can't go back to coach pitch. So that, I think natural progression, that's why Dad stayed with me. Yeah. Dad was a member of the board for our local little league organization stayed involved with that for years was on the board for a really long time. So I think one of the things that I really kind of pushed for as my son's gotten into the little league is that's one of the things that I still feel like where I find my dad, like looking mm-hmm. at the little league picture at like, I see my, I see my dad going through all that stuff. And this is still the preface, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is me putting myself in my dad's shoes to feel closer to my dad, not being here anymore. Is that the shit show? Because that's so. Now, God, I wish I hadn't have fucking done that. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, you want to, we talk about all the times about difficult jobs and everything else like that. There is no job harder than volunteer work for a youth sports league. Preach. Yes. There is nothing harder. Got two coaches looking at each other right now. Just- there is nothing harder because. A, for one, right off the bat, you're doing it out of the good grace of your heart and your time, right? You Most of the time, you, you have a child involved or something like that. But, you know, some people do it just because they love the sport and they love the game. But more often than not, we're putting our own time, blood, sweat, everything into this after we work a normal 9 to 5, 40 hours a week, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, for sure. So now you're fully invested into this multiple days a week, multiple hours. You're it's not, not your job, but it feels it. a whole lot like it is. I'm yes. telling you, there's times my job that I get paid for is easier for this, which should be a youth sports thing. Yeah. Uh, right now, I'm incredibly blessed this year. Like, I'm just an assistant coach. Um, I'm incredibly blessed this year to have a good set of parents uh, because sometimes that's not the case. Yeah. And, yeah, man, like is that difficult. Coaching, that is so incredibly difficult. But that's just on the coaching phase of it. So you're working with these kids and stuff like that. And that, that's the part that brings me joy, right? You want to find joy in that. But also it's kind of one of those things that I kind of harken back to GameStop is one, one of your greatest hobbies or one of your greatest loves slowly becomes a job that you absolutely detest. It sucks the soul out of everything. So without getting too far embedded into it, like over the last week or so, it's just – for lack of better words, anybody that watches like the Little League World Series and stuff like that, there's you know precursor series that go well, into I mean, that. Most like, parents, I think, uh, like I mean, most yeah. people that listen, I don't know, you have listeners that are involved in. I mean, everybody's involved a little bit somehow. The like only thing or sister or brother. harder than travel ball, in my opinion, to manage is all stars. Yeah, travel ball is wild. All stars oh, yeah. for going in, you know, through the Little League and stuff like that, making selections and things like that is incredibly difficult. Um, our league has well, kind of been working through of, a different kind because of capacity. Of parents, but, so mostly, I mean, like mostly it's because uh-huh. of parents, like, and then yeah. coaches who can't fucking get along with other coaches. That's, that's yeah. always what the issue is. Like, it's not fucking, yeah. you know, which sucks because the kids are just fucking like the kids don't even know. They're just like fucking, can we just play? Like, they don't care who we're playing against. Like, can I play with, can, yeah. like my kids would love to play with the kids from fucking the other town. And that's, yeah. that's, and that's where all their friends are. That's the problem. So therein lies the problem. It's not the kids. It's the adults. Well, yeah, sure. The kids don't run the fucking the, show, and they should. The adults really should. is the hardest part to manage through all of it. Like, the, these kids are just poor little <laughs> bystanders. They're there. Okay. Poor little kids are guilty by association. But when you're working through all of this, and well, you're you know, trying to make plans and everything, that one, yeah. for one thing, nothing's structured. Like, period. Like, um... Coming into the league this year, we'd had, you know, a lot of changes through our board of directors and stuff. And I am incredibly, once again, incredibly blessed to be able to work with all the people that we have this year uh, because I think everyone has their heart in the right places. We're doing a lot of different things. But coming into it, like, we had, like, player release forms and stuff like that that it wasn't even typos. Yeah. Like, my kids felt better. 
<laughs> like, like I showed you yeah. a couple of these, Nathaniel, they were atrocious. I'm like, did someone scribble this on an etch a sketch? Like, what the fuck is this? Well, it, the, you know, it's kind of them things when when you go up and it still had like the claws of you can go out and duel for whoever's the, the best player. <laughs> <laughs> that's how old they it's were. Like draw a line that's, in the sand between second and third base. That's yeah. so shitty too. Oh, uh, it was bad. So, like, literally, I think I'm. I, when I first started working in call center, I hated Excel. I had no knowledge of Excel. Shout out Chris Mullins. If you listen to this, that man has been my life, blood, and savior. Taught me how to use it to some degree. But literally, I, I took everything we had in the league that was built off of Etch, etch Sketch and put it into a spreadsheet. And everybody's like, what is this? <laughs> like, it even, it was I'm sitting in the thing. thing. He's like, oh, my God, this is so fancy. I'm like, bro, it's only took me like, like an hour to put together. He's like, you don't understand how great this is. <laughs> Literally nobody's ever used a spreadsheet before. But it's like there, there was no organization on that front. So if we're not even organizing that situation, when we start moving towards things like picking players to go play in a year in tournament and there's no communication, yeah. there's no structure, there's nothing built, it's exhausting. Yeah. Like I am so fucking tired like leading precursory into it too. Plus like we're talking about my dad, how I feel like I wanted to follow in his footsteps for all this. My dad's birthday was at the beginning of this week. So I was already kind of dealing with that. Like what you, what you don't know though is like your dad did it like for you guys. Cause it's what, that's what it's about. Right. But mm-hmm. also he was fucking miserable. Oh, he, I know he, he was miserable. Hated. It was awful. It's like, I wore this like bucket hat that everybody like remembers my dad for like when he was sitting outside and, you know, watching the kids play and stuff. He's like, you know, Listen, I'm not helping y'all coach. I'm not doing it. I've done my tour of duty. Yeah. Like, I'm not dealing with that anymore. He's like, I will not coach. I'm going to sit out here, and I'm going to be papal. And then I'll pull up there to watch my nephew play, and he's got the fucking scorebook in his hands. <laughs> yeah, they never give it up. <laughs> it's like he's still sitting there working. I'm like, yeah, okay. Didn't give it up, right? But it's like I was wearing that hat. I wore it tonight. Like I was like, I'm going to wear one of these bucket hats. I need to tra- channel some Freddy's in tonight because I've been in a funk. I just kind of wanted to feel like my dad tonight. And I was like, pull up over there. We played fucking Knott County two weeks ago. And on the third batter of the game, I was already being threatened to be ran off the field. <laughs> I was already threatened to get well, that's, ejected. That's in Freddy fashion though well that, that's the funny part that's why kind of me and Nathaniel yeah. talked about pulling up there and I see that bearded fucking nut job sitting out on the field again I'm like this is gonna be a long ass day yeah, yeah. walk out there and then I told Nathaniel I said I wore this bucket hat trying to channel some zen today and then I got to think about it my dad's probably been ran off the field more than any <laughs> well, other the coach reason, thrown out up the here reason I before. try not to coach is because when I coach I become my father yeah, we all like, do. Yeah, we we all do, right? It's fucking like like and like my dad was like probably thrown off the little league field more than anybody on earth. I mean, a lot. He we was thrown. He's thrown off a lot, and and you know, and he's a love dude. It was just yeah. You know, well, the worst one of the shit. worst things in the world as a coach is when you've already had a bad previous interaction with an umpire and they know you. Oh yeah. yeah. It's, it's so over. we pulled up and like this dude's calling strikes in the other batter's box because he literally a vagina, like he won't get behind the plate. Yeah. So he's calling behind the pitcher over their shoulder the whole entire game because heaven forget, you know, he gets his pussy wet back there. Fuck that guy. I fucking hate his guts. Oh. But, <laughs> God, I hate him. He does suck. So he was out there behind the mound and he makes like two or three bad calls. And I didn't even really say anything out of pocket. Just, I was chirpy. I'm like, guys, we're going to have to get our fucking pogo sticks out or something like that to hit the, you know, these pitches or Amazing. I I, I remember exactly what it was now. One of the kids on our team struck out. And I said, Bubby, I'm going to need you to grow about six inches so you can hit that pitch next time you get up to bat. And he said, listen, time. I was like, oh, fuck. Here comes the bearded wonder. He's like, we're not doing this again. I was like, okay. So th- the key word in that sentence is, is again. Yes. He was oh, already he was waiting already on already waiting on he, This is premeditated. He was already waiting on me. Yeah. But to be fair, I was already waiting on this fuck stick too. So, I mean... It's there. So he starts chirping. I start chirping. I literally look at Nathaniel. I'm like, you're the only person up here right now that I know that can keep a book. I'm going to need you to keep my team's fucking book here in a minute. Yeah. Because I have a feeling I'm going to have to go off to the bottom of this freaking hill. Um, I made it. Made yeah. it through all five. I'm proud of myself. I am too impressed. And slowly, impressed like this it. umpire got better as long as the day went along. So we start calling him General Electric about midway through your gang. Okay. 
It was like he's like a GE oven. You have to preheat the dumbass first. Like the first game, <laughs> it's just a fucking nightmare. He's got to preheat first, and once he's cooking, he's fine. Oh, dumbass yeah. from fucking Michigan. Who the fuck is from Michigan? Go uh, like umpiring and fucking. Mm. But to be fair, he made a terrible call. I he hope cared. he got hit by a semi on the way home. He said, "I'm here for this." I hate this fucker. <laughs> like I hate him so bad. I don't want to wish so, bodily harm on anybody, but fuck this guy at its core. Your shit show of the week is this umpire <laughs> or baseball or little league baseball? In yeah, general? I think it's just baseball in general right now. It's yeah. just like this whole week's been long and then it's culminated. And the thing is, it's just oh. the same shit show, <clears throat> oh, right? Yeah, yeah. But this is it. Yeah. So because you guys are in it together. Oh, you don't even understand how shitty this is. So you were just talking about how your gang got canceled a while ago because they were worried about the safety of the girls, right? Yeah, which was bullshit. It was 100% bullshit. You want to know why it was bullshit? Yeah. Because Knott County Central wanted the field. Oh, that's 100% what we said they were going to do. 100%. So, okay, you guys are supposed to play at 4 o'clock. So the set stage, once again, we got invited to come to a local college to play on the turf because our kids, you know, it's cool for our kids to be able to go to that environment and be able to play on turf. Listen, we play basically in a parking lot. It's basically what our field's <laughs> like right now. Yeah. Like, it needs clay. It needs. We put in a lot of work to it. Floods destroyed a lot of stuff around here, so obviously we're building a lot of it back. Um, God bless Letcher's hearts. They literally play, like, in... Have you seen their fields here lately? Uh-uh. Oh, the, no, they're, they're terrible. Oh, it's awful. Because they were underwater. Oh, they, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. And their outfield fence became a dumping site. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. Now, like, it's a nightmare. So for us to be able to go to this college and play on turf and everything like everybody's like, oh, it's great, oh, it's but it's fucking not county, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's funny. Like, you know they're going to have that area. one fuck stick of an umpire. You know they make up their own rules as they go yep. perpetually. That's just what's going to happen. <laughs> like we've seen literally like be a tie game, them go up one round. They're like, oh, time limit, call the game just so the other like their team wins. Like, we had a team in extra Asshole innings coaches, tonight late. Not and the kids. Literally, the fucking lights went out. We're like, well, that's an easy way to call time. You just fucking black out the ballpark. Were you all still there for that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Just blacked out the whole damn thing. We got one kid back behind us on, on top of a fucking high wall they wasn't supposed to be on. The whole entire lights went out. And he's, like, screaming bloody murder, thinking he's going to fall off and die. It's just me. So we get over there. I'm about midway through. It's pouring the rain. They're like, you know what? We just we really probably don't need to have softball because the balls are really big. Yeah, their their excuse and was the ball when the ball gets wet in softball, it you can't pitch it. Yeah. That's what literally yeah. they said. Yeah, yeah, we were like we were like, mm. Yeah. They said it would uh the issues with the grip of the ball because it would be wet. And I was like, wouldn't you just fucking say you guys' games are canceled? Why they're canceled? So their games yeah. are canceled, right? right. They're, canceled they're supposed to play at four o'clock. I'm supposed to play at four. One of the coach pitch games ends at three fifty two. And we look out there and then right at four o'clock we're on the spot, not getting Central High School is out there practicing. Yep. So we are supposed to start our game at around five thirty or six o'clock. We go out there and I'm talking to the guy that's organized the whole entire thing. He's like, Yeah, I was just kind of really worried about the safety while I go. You know, them girls throwing them pitches underhand and stuff. I don't really know how that works. Um I just didn't figure it's safe, but I don't, I don't really know how it works. Like, I don't know how them little girls throw that ball like that. But I just didn't figure it'd probably be safe. Like, baseball's probably – I figured we, we should just play baseball. I was like, oh, boys, if that ain't some fucking baked-in misogyny if I've ever yeah, fucking heard. That. As a man who's worked in Knott County for years, I, yeah, it's the whole – I'm like, you we'll get it, right? Just, oh, yeah. just say that the regional tournament's coming up in the fucking high school team. Is there water the issues field. or people? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I just mm. you know that's where he worked before. The people are shittier. Now the people are shittier than the water because that fucking umpire's there. The people are the shit fountain in neon. Yes, I would take the shit fountain in neon over that umpire. Oh, every bit of it. I would. Yeah, I would drink out of that fucking fire <laughs> I had that night or whatever it is that night before I would. Mm. Well, you got him primed up tonight because I called went in. Went up to him before in between innings, and the look on his face when I come up to him, I said, "Hey, man, I need to ask you something." <laughs> the fear in his face, and I said, "Dude, I just need to know what the, what world we're going with. Are we playing five runs or unlimited runs? I don't know." And he went, "Oh, let me go ask." And I'm like, 
Who's he going to ask? The damn umpire. What are you doing? Let me go it's ask. It's his sixth game of the day that he's calling, and he doesn't know the answer to that question. Exactly. So I, I stopped him about midway through after he's already warned me about being tossed out twice. Twice. <laughs> Further proving the dude didn't have the fucking By the way, to throw me out. I knew that Rhino and Nathaniel had this experience this week and tonight. And that's why I forced them to come record the episode tonight because this is all I wanted in my life was for them oh to just talk God. shit. Well, I mean, when, when I get a text from you that says, are y'all in jail? And I was like, no, not yet. <laughs> I no. thought for sure you guys, we weren't going to we weren't gonna have an episode tonight. I was going to assume. Well, I've prison. only had issues with two umpires this year. The rest of the time, I've been pretty laid back. Yeah. Now, Nathaniel's the only coach that's been thrown out this year. Yes, I have. <laughs> He told a 72-year-old man that he was pathetic. No, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> he is pathetic. <laughs> what I said was, that was pathetic. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, you yourself were yelling that game, too. And I think I just, he had had a fucking you were a little louder. right then. Oh, yeah. So, no, here's the thing. with well, this, this poor little old fella. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. My brother and myself look like identical twins. Beard, glasses, all of it. I don't really know about that. You all have been around us long enough, though. Yeah, yeah right. that's like, true. Okay. If you put me and him on the other <laughs> yeah, side of the football dad, field. my dad, you're both the same person yeah, he, anyway. he, he thinks we're the yeah. same person. Like, I was dating a girl in high school. We were walking across the parking lot, and she was working at a gas station at the time, and one of her friends that was in there with her said, which one is he? And she said, I don't know. <laughs> we were far enough away that she couldn't tell. So, poor old Jerry, God love his heart. Shout out, Jerry, the <sighs> umpire. Jeremy has ripped him so many times. Jeremy got thrown out of a t-ball game by this man. Okay? <laughs> That's impressive. Like, like t-ball this, is more hardcore than neon. Jeremy was the, else on Earth. Oh, yeah. Is, yes. Jeremy was the bane of existence for this poor old fella. And I think he honestly thought for years that I was Jeremy. Oh, because I came up onto the field one time. He's like, I'm, I'm just talk to him, be nice. And he's like, you know what? I really appreciate you talking to me. And I'm glad we could just really bury that hatchet. I'm like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> and I look out there, Jerry, Jerry smiling at me. I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you've, you've got me set up for this. So last year I had a lot of problems with, with the portal of failure. And now after what I've endured with not County bitch, <laughs> and the other one, whose name I will not mention, but damn, if he ever freaking umpires in neon ever again, my team won't take the field. Look, I, I, I'll get him to come. Trust me. I, oh, no. Can, we, you yeah, we can bring him in. in. No, I've already told Chris he's not allowed to come back up. No, you sure? Because I, I can make it happen for you. No, he's not allowed to come back up. So so what you're saying is he's going to... Uh, he looked at me us. at a game in yeah. Weisberg and said, you can shut your mouth now, and then gave me a thumbs up. I'd have punched him in the fucking throat. And then literally told my kid on the very <laughs> next pitch guys. that he needed to watch his check swing. You don't tell my fucking no. kid to watch his fucking check swing. Who the fuck are you? You're like 21 years old, dumbass. Oh, you don't even God. know what the fucking game is. He, you know, he actually admitted during the game, he's like, you know, I changed the strike zone throughout the game. And Carl was like, why? He's like, I don't know. He's like, you don't have an answer for that? No, no. Well, he <laughs> told us that he was umpiring the way that he was told to umpire. And my exact response was, you were fucking told wrong. Like, I don't <laughs> know what you're doing. The strike zone was bottom of chin, top of shoe. Oh, that's hot. Um, And... Both, both batter's boxes. Like, I really yeah. think he would have so, caught a strike if it beamed a kid in the head. So, okay. so here's Strike the, zone's a bed mattress. Let me tell you something yeah. cool, right? <laughs> let, me, let me tell you this the last thing, last thing I'm going to say, right? Listen. Next week, we're having an umpire on. Oh, God. Please go let it be Jerry. <laughs> no, man. It's, it's, it's Jeremy Paul. Okay. All yeah. right. Jeremy. So we're having an umpire I think we on. should have saved this whole segment right here for no. next week. Yeah, no, that's what have been a good this one. is what this is this is why this is why I wanted this to happen because the lead into next week's episode is gonna be so wonderful because you guys have just talked so much shit about umpires for ten minutes. No, we've talked about shitty umpires. <laughs> just two. Just um, two. Like the, 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 any umpire will tell you. They're going to have hot streaks, coach streaks. I'm well, making calls and stuff JP, like that. They're going to deal with parents just like coaches deal with parents. Shout, shout out JP. He, 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 his strike zone gets bigger the later it gets in the night. You know, he's, like, he's, like, let's yeah. fucking, he's like, let's fucking go. That's a strike. All That's umpires strike. do. Let's like, fucking go. Plus, if a team's losing like 15 to nothing and they can't get anybody let's out, go home. 
You're going to have to widen yeah. that strike zone. And anybody's understanding of that. I love that. Like, the one I was talking about that was like, what's your, what's your chick swing? I'm, fuck him. <laughs> um, so the coaches that we played against that night, you know, in baseball, in Little League, you have to make sure your kids have one at bat and then two innings in the field. Four innings in the field were covered for all my subs. Most of them had the one at bat, but we're making it back down through the other part of the lineup where the other two could bat. The only problem is we sucked so bad that night that it's like three up, three down, three up, three down, three up. Yeah. We weren't getting through the but, lineup to get through. Yeah. So it was the top of the fifth. I walked over to that coach. I'm like, hey, you know, I've got two kids coming up this inning. I know you mercyed us in four. Do you care if we play the top of the fifth so I can get these at bats in? Yeah, man, go ahead. I want to work on this pitcher. We're going to get him out there. I'm like, do what you need to do. So we get through the first couple batters, and then all of a sudden this dude's strike zone goes from the size of Guam <laughs> to the size of this fucking What's solo cup. What's the square cup? footage of Guam? I don't know, but big compared to this fucking solo cup. Good. Okay? You Tightens this strike zone up. We get through the at-bats. and not like They're beating us like 13-2. We've turned the scoreboard off. The strike zone is so bad that this kid has walked in like four runs now. I literally call time and walk across the field, and I tell the coach. 212 square miles. Fucking A. Quick Google. Um, I literally walked over and told the coach, said, our kids have batted, and all of them were necessary. And I said it loud enough for the umpire to hear. So all of our kids have batted. This guy is a freaking disgrace. Don't let him destroy this kid's arm. Yeah. Like, literally, you've done this out of your good grace of your heart to help me get these kids through. Don't let him fuck up this kid's yeah. arm because he can't get out of the inning now because there is no strike zone now. Right. And that dude's just sitting there looking at me the whole entire time. I'm like, yeah, I'm talking about you, dipshit. I'm talking about you. And he's like, well, let's just see if we can get him out of this inning. Next pitch is literally at my kid's eyeballs, and he calls strike three. Um, I'm like, our parents are erupting, throwing a fit. They're like, that's not a strike. And I'm like, high five. And people, I'm like, yeah, let's get the fuck out of here. Good, don't matter. Let's go. So, strike like, three. we walk out there, and the parent of the kid that struck out, she's like, how can you be okay with that? You've argued everything the entire game. I'm like, the game's over. And he was going to literally cause that kid to have, to have fucking Tommy John yeah. surgery by the time we got <laughs> out of here. Like, I'm more worried about preserving this kid's health at this point. I'm like, we were not coming back. The game no. was already over. <sighs> I invented the whole segment so you guys could talk shit about umpires. I think um, we're going to go on for a very long time. I think so. We should, you, Nathaniel, you should come back when JP's here. And just see if we can fucking roast umpires. Oh, all day. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, that's not something Andrew's going to want to talk about. <laughs> no, no. No, you're right. That's not his forte. That's his probably niche, true. But I'm telling you, man, like, I'm just trying to literally well, get through. I know your shit show is not umpires. It's really this week. Oh, it's just the whole entire week. This this week. Like, your, your life this week. So. And yours is too, right? Oh, yeah. Your shit show is this week. That's your yeah, whole shit yeah. show. Yeah. It's well, he's thing. enduring the same one that I am right now. Like, yeah. mine's, we, this, mine's this week, too, but it's this week at my job. Like, there's been many a night where me and Nathaniel's messaging each other back and forth at like 1230. It's like, what the fuck do we do? Yeah. <laughs> well, what I'm, have we done? What have we done? But, uh, Nathaniel's wife is here, and her shit show is nobody pays their water bill. That's, that's her shit show. <laughs> Well, she's at, like adjacent to everything that's going on in the league, so she's living this night. Yeah. Right yeah. with us, so she's, yeah, she's right here on board. Nodding her head. We always have we always have um, somebody in the background always just nodding their fucking head the whole episode. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. Hand in the air, just preach. You know what I bet she has to deal with it, so she kind of just well, yeah, she hears everything. Yeah, yeah, all the problems. You gotta talk to somebody, right? Yeah. I'm just. <laughs> I want to go home and probably cry into the pillow. Okay, well, I'll let you go home. Uh, Lay down, go to sleep. <laughs> I'll have I'll, dreams about like being in the movie Saw with that dumb fucking Michigan umpire from Knott County. I feel like he's going to be in your dreams, but kind of like a notebook situation. <laughs> you, like what, a romantic what do you mean? interest. Yeah, I'm like, confused. Yeah, like no. You mean that note? Him. No, 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 no. <laughs> that ain't it. See, it's kind of <laughs> like some sort of bromance they got. It's the beard. Mm, no. They love each it. other. When he looks over there in his fucking stupid Michigan accent, hey, hey, we're not doing this again. I'm a fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Well, I just knew it was real rough when I seen, all I seen was your hands up on the fence and you said, and I said, all I seen, you said, I just need somebody to keep the book. And I went, all right, then. I was trying to climb over it like a fucking cage match. I'm glad the debut of Shit Show was good. 
I'm glad my, my wife literally tried to shush me in the game day, and I bit her head off. So, honey, I love you. I'm sorry I bit your head off. She doesn't listen to the show. But, no, she doesn't. She refuses. Say, say she whatever refuses. you want. She, can't she refuses. Say whatever you want. Do you blame her? To listen, no. to listen to fucking us? Well, I don't understand how anybody listens to us. But she hates the sound of my voice. Me too. <laughs> like on a recording. Like, oh, I don't know. It's fair. Sorry. It's fair. All right, y'all. Listen, that's our show. Nathaniel, thanks for coming in, man. It's fucking awesome. Appreciate um, it. You should fire Andrew because he's not here today. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's not very fair, but it sounds good to be good content. We get content be fired because yeah. he wasn't. And then he comes in next week and he's like, so I got fired. And then we had to just have. <laughs> What's your I shit like show? We That's shit show of the week. That we can That'd be the shit show. Yeah, way. I yeah. like it. I'll work out. Man, appreciate you coming in. Awesome or just time. have Nathaniel come in and fire We're, him on the air. Live night. Nathaniel lives right up the road, so we're going to have him on all the time now. <laughs> he's going to fucking come on. Come down and record with us. We don't have anything to do. That'll be good. Uh, Rhino, I hope you get some I hope you get some rest and I hope uh, something. you wake up in the morning and baseball doesn't exist. Baseball will exist. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. He'll message me at about 9.30 in the morning and be like, hey. <laughs> and it's just going to be a message. Okay. Oh, for sure. I'm Listen. actually checking my phone right now to make sure that nothing's happening. Y'all last remember, house. get y'all get your phones and uh, check us out. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Segways. Do the downloads. <laughs> Goddamn, I'm getting good at the segways. Got we're, it. We're podcasting. We're podcasting now. And they're like swimwear. Um, follow us on Instagram. Share some content on Instagram. We don't share anywhere else. And then Patreon gets the good shit, so... Um, you know, support the show so we can keep going. Um, yeah, we uh trying to put in the work and trying to get the get us out there so we can get some more listeners, get some more content for you guys. We're gonna try to do two shows a week soon. If that's what everybody wants. You all comment on Spotify or on um, Apple Podcasts. Let us know if that's what you want. Like, comment, subscribe, everything. Check us out on YouTube. We show the shorts there all the time and the TikToks. Rhino handles the TikToks most of the time, so those are cool. Um, I ain't had a whole lot of time here lately because guess why? It's okay. I'm helping. Fucking baseball. Fucking baseball. The shit show. Hey, guys. Um, You guys got anything? Y'all got anything else? Hey, appreciate you guys. Thanks, hustlers. Remember, ain't nobody stopping you from quitting your job, but you.